Hello everyone. Hope you are having a fabulous time and uh, you got Cloud Native for 2021 North America so far. I'm the Myanmar and today I am going to be talking about getting involved in the K8's Really Shadow program. But before I go ahead, uh, it would be completely reverse of me uh, to not introduce myself a little bit more in detail. So, just bring that screen up. So, as I mentioned before, I am the real woman and I work as a team lead with HSBC as part of my day job. Over and above which I am an active contributor to open source projects, uh, a few open source projects really, uh, to, uh, under the CNCF panel. Uh, fun fact that is also how this presentation came to be uh, uh, as part of my experience with uh, the Kubernetes uh, project and the release uh, team. So uh, I've had the good fortune of being uh, a contributor in both the Kubernetes as well as the Litmus Chaos project uh, since last year. Also, I am a CNCF ambassador and a co-organizer of the CNCF student user group. That being said, I feel like it's a little bit more important to talk about uh, our subject matter from the standpoint of what it isn't. The reason being, a lot of information is already available um, as to what it is. And we also will be covering it. So um, don't worry too much about that. But um, a lot of stuff um, around the internet or whatever you search for uh, doesn't really detail as to what it is. So um, the release shadow program um, is a mentorship program for sure but it is not a coding or a documentation internship program with the kubernetes project sure kubernetes project is involved with um, the lfx outreach google season of dogs google season of code previously it has been sorry and uh, uh, we have had successful participation in those particular programs but the Kubernetes release shadow program is not related to that. And uh, just as a reminder, it is not the only way to get started or uh, you know contribute to Kubernetes or open source in general. Uh, so even if you don't get it, um, and even if you don't make it in the very first attempt, Please don't be demotivated because this is not the do all and be all of your open source journey or your journey within the Kubernetes project. And the last line is something that uh, I felt needed an explicit uh, uh, shout out there. Uh, it is a great line on your resume. It definitely is when uh, you know you go ahead and put. Uh, the experience um, on your resume or your CV saying that you worked um, in worked or coordinated with uh, the various stakeholders towards putting out the Kubernetes version. It definitely makes for a um, great viewership, but it is not just that. And with this presentation and the next couple of slides, I hope I'm able to convince you of that. Um, so now that we've looked at what it is not, Let's look at what it is. So I apologize for the uh, video shifting a bit here and there, but uh, coming to the very first one. So uh, a typical Kubernetes release um, spans three to four um, and sometimes even five months. And given the uh, release cadence that has been introduced, um, uh, starting 119 um the voluntary time commitment is approximately three to four months so um 
ensure that you have the time uh, to actually contribute and um, you know sort of put in the effort uh, when you sign up for the program because as with everything in life what you put in is what you get out of the experience um the second thing is it's obviously a very great opportunity to learn more about the kubernetes ecosystem as well as the open source uh, ecosystem in general so um, as part of the release team you get the opportunity to interact with various uh, stakeholder uh, special interest groups and uh, some of the best and kindest folks in the tech community um, and i'm not exaggerating so as part of those interactions you not only um, understand more about the release process uh, but you also gain a better understanding of the ongoings in the open source community in general and uh, like i said before it's because you are involved in a release of uh, an open source uh, uh, you know tool um you are going to have uh, exposure to how it works um in my day job for example i did not have that um, uh, you know standpoint from where i could understand what a typical release process looked like uh, but being a part of the open source community uh, communities rather um, help me gain more understanding and also give me pretty good exposure to how a release looks like um, in an open source ecosystem. Um, last but not the least, um, I did mention that uh, it is not an internship program, but it is definitely a mentorship opportunity. So you are going to shadow or work under um, a role lead and uh, that will be obviously basis the application form that you fill and the choice that you make while you fill that application form and irrespective of the role uh, that you are shadowing it primarily encompasses um, coordination and facilitation of the various artifacts that go into a kubernetes release so there is no actual um coding or writing documentation um required as part of being uh in the release team but um you will be doing a lot more than that so it's a very um great learning experience if i may say so and uh, honestly it also um is as much of an effort from your side as much as it is uh you know getting into the release team so getting into the release team is a competitive effort i know that because uh uh, uh last release this release cycle rather we received 185 plus applications alone so it is obviously a very competitive program but again like I said before, what you get out of the experience is what you put into it. So unless you are ready to make that time commitment and unless you are um, ready to make that effort commitment for uh, the time frame, I would highly recommend you to assess your skills, assess your strengths, and then go ahead with the application. This is not to deter anyone, but is just giving a realistic picture of how it is. So now that we've spoken about all of this, um, who organizes this whole effort? Because at the end of it, um, somebody needs to be organizing uh, this particular program, right? Um, so within the uh, kubernetes project itself we have various uh, groups and um in the kubernetes project like with every other 
large organization, we have specific nomenclature. So uh, the governance uh, aspects are uh, managed by the committees. Um, user groups are, uh, you know, uh, folks uh, who have similar interest areas and do not have any ownership of the code base. Um, working groups and SIGs are uh, sort of, so SIGs are special interest groups before you know anybody gets uh, confused. So uh, special interest groups, like the name suggests, is dedicated towards special interests and uh, furthering those interests into an actual artifact for each Kubernetes release and uh, uh, maybe not even that at some time. So there are special interest groups that do not have anything to do with the release, but um, uh, have like a meta role to play within the project. So uh, just as, uh, uh, you know, brief, it, uh, there are various groups within the Kubernetes project would be a short summary of, um, uh, you know, how our project is organized, but it is the SIG release that uh, organizes the uh, release, uh, you know, the release shadow program. And the release team is one of the sub projects within the special interest group release. Um, so who is actually eligible? Because I've said a lot about, uh, you know, who's organizing it, what it is, what it is not, but who actually is eligible? So uh, like I mentioned before, um, anyone really, um, because as a prerequisite, you do not need a lot of things, but it, but let me remind you once again that it's a highly competitive program. So um, the narrowing down or the selection depends on a lot of factors. So um, you can apply if you are really interested and you do not need any experience um, being part of a release team. You do not need coding expertise and you do not need to have knowledge or uh, you know, expertise on Kubernetes. Having it, however, is not a disadvantage and will definitely help you. But uh, fun fact, I did not start off having um, Kubernetes knowledge when I joined the release team last year. My whole idea of joining Kubernetes as a project was to learn more about uh, Kubernetes as a tool or a technology. So um, honestly, if you are interested, you definitely should consider signing up. Uh, and uh, genuinely, there are no uh, specific prerequisites except for the time and effort commitment from your end. Um, so I've spoken at length about uh, the release team and, you know, I've, I've reiterated, uh, reiterated the release team so many times, you must want to see a pictorial depiction of how you know the release team looks like i mean i cannot put the faces because we are um uh, we don't have like a consistent uh, uh, what do you say membership every uh, cycle so the release team as a whole basically looks like this so as you can see there um, are a lot of verticals um in the release team. There's an enhancements vertical, there's a CI signal vertical, there's a bug triage vertical, there's a docs vertical, release notes, and a comms vertical. Now, um, each of these verticals will be responsible for delivering the artifacts um, that are assigned for their vertical. For example, because I have led the comms for 1.2, um, 1.21, um, I can speak at length about it. Uh, so the comms uh, vertical basically deals with uh, the communication aspect of the release. Uh, now that uh, involves all the, you know, webinars or blogs that you see going out after the release. Uh, it also deals with the blog that actually gets released on the release day and uh, you know all the coordination with cncf all of that comes under the comms uh, vertical 
Now, if you go to the docs bit, it's it's a no-brainer, right? You need documentation for every release uh, artifact. So the docs vertical is responsible to is responsible for ensuring that there are relevant documentation available um, for every uh, release artifact or, or enhancement that goes in. And speaking of enhancements, obviously, uh, you know, we uh, are, you know, targeting uh, specific artifacts to go into each release, right? Um, and within the uh, Kubernetes project, we even have a special name for them. Um, so the way this is put in is via a Kubernetes enhancement proposal. So uh, the enhancements lead, uh, enhancements vertical is responsible for sort of tracking and ensuring that all the enhancements are in within a particular date and, uh, you know, um, understanding if there are any barriers with respect to reviewing and um, approving the enhancements and, uh, uh, you know, uh, stuff that basically um, would uh, be, you know, responsible, um, would be the responsibility of an enhancements lead is uh, basically just the tracking of enhancements um, as an overall, uh, you know, gist. So um, now you may ask, uh, who, what does the release lead to and what is the emeritus advisor in green? So, um, as with everything, you require a, a chief in command, a command in chief or chief in command. I'm sorry, I forget the term here, but um, you require someone at the helm to um, sort of bring everyone together and shepherd, the, shepherd them towards uh, uh, driving the release to the completion, right? So the release lead, actually does that job along with his, her, or their shadows. And uh, the emeritus advisor is a previous release lead who um, actually ends up um, functioning as an advisor of sorts to uh, the release lead, release lead shadows, and literally every everybody in the team. Uh, based, based on his or, or their experience in uh, the release team. So where do you come? And that is where I would like to show you. So if you can see here, um, there are a lot of shadows um, uh, written across each vertical, right? So you, uh, you as applicants for the release shadow program would tend to file an application for one or more of these roles. And um, so you possibly can select for one or more. So that is completely dependent upon you. But uh, as I am probably going to cover in the next uh, couple of slides, I would highly recommend that uh, you apply for one specifically because it helps in narrowing down your intent and your skill set as well. But uh, the shadowing aspect is where you will be working along with your vertical role lead and uh, ensuring that the artifact or the deliverables assigned to you are completed by the specific time. Now, even in this whole uh, image, um, there are specific um, times in the release when each of these are more active. For example, um, comms is a more end of the release heavy role, which doesn't mean that comms doesn't do anything in the start of the release. We are more often prepping towards the end of the release so that a lot of the work doesn't bulk up towards the end as opposed to which enhancements is a start of the release heavy role. Because only once you start tracking the enhancements will you be able to actually get the release out, right? Uh, and the relevant docs out and the relevant release notes out. So uh, different roles have, uh, you know, different time commitments and different, um, you know, uh, different areas in the release, not different areas, different times in the release when they are more active. 
but as an overall time commitment like i mentioned in a couple of slides before um, it should be around 3 to 4 months now coming to how do you apply so at the end of every release um, this was the um, shadow selection for uh, kubernetes 1.22 uh, this was sent out after the Kubernetes 1. Dot, not after, uh, towards the end of Kubernetes 1.21. And uh, this is sent to the Kubernetes dev um, and uh, Kubernetes dev Google groups and a couple of other uh, uh, avenues within the Kubernetes project. We also try to amplify it via our Twitter handle. So uh, those are good avenues where you can keep uh, you know, track of this particular uh, email or you know, notif uh, notification. So the emeritus advisor for that current release would be the one who, who will be sending it out in case you have signed up for the Google Groups. And um, Slack, obviously, there will be communication sent out in Slack as well. So uh, those are three, four places where you should keep your eyes peeled if you are interested in joining the release. Now, uh, some of the things that I would like to, uh, you know, reinstate before we close off for the day. Uh, it is not the only way to get started in Kubernetes or open source. It does seem like it because, uh, you know, of the lower entry level barrier where you don't require any prior experience in a lot of avenues, but it's not the only way to get started. Um, for example, there are a lot of folks who, uh, you know, have tried applying for release team and as a result have gotten introduced to other avenues within the project where they are now contributing. So um, it's, it's just a matter of uh, you understanding where you can contribute best. And trying to find that out is one of the major uh, things that you'll be doing when you're in an open source uh, ecosystem because there is no um, you know set pathway for any of us to grow as a contributor so uh, if this doesn't work out you definitely can sort of uh, you know pick and choose from other opportunities that are available not necessarily mentorship or internship programs but there are tons of other opportunities like documentation and non-code contributions that are available, not only within Kubernetes, but with other open source projects. So um, please, please don't be demotivated if you don't get in at the very first attempt. Um, and that also ties in with my last point, because it's a very very competitive program. Like I mentioned for the 1.23 cycle that has recently commenced, um, we received around 185 applications for around 40-ish positions. So you uh, need to imagine the scale that uh, we are, you know, sort of um, scale of applications that we are sort of receiving and uh, the amount of rejections that ha have to be sent out. So it's an extremely com competitive program. And as a result, it is also very easy for uh, rejection to come by given the competitiveness. So don't get demotivated. And as always, there are other avenues. You just need to ask for help. And the last thing that I believe I already spoke about is what you put in is what you get out of the experience. So if you are trying to become a contributor or, you know, assess, uh, and sustain your contributions to uh, Kubernetes as a project, um, it is extremely essential to be able to make that time commitment and effort commitment, without which it's not, uh, you know, going to work out for any of you, like neither for the project and obviously not for you. Uh, this personally it took a long while for me, uh, a little while for me to understand, I won't say long, a little while for me to understand, because uh, as with everything else, and as with everybody else, I was expecting quick results. 
but uh, sustainability uh, sustainability of the contributions is the key here because um, high impact, doing high impact work matters but also being able to sustain that high impact work is also of equal importance so if you are putting in efforts and if you are trying to make a difference you definitely will be um, able to get more out of the experience and you definitely will be able to um, climb the contributor ladder faster as opposed to someone who is just uh, um, you know doing it for the sake of having a tagline on the resume and there's nothing wrong with the latter um, I'm, I'm not discrediting the um, you know, efforts of the person who is doing it for the line on the resume. Uh, but it is extremely important to understand that um, there is an equal effort and time commitment that's required from your end to see the benefits um, that uh, can be reaped out of this experience. So that being said, thank you. And uh, it was a great day. Uh, honor to be presenting to you all on the first ever student track. Um, if there are any questions, uh, please let me know. Um, I shall be available to take them after the talk is done. Thank you so much and have a great time. Bye-bye.